have everything in front of you for part two ready to assemble so we have the body the front legs the side feet which are going to be built up we have our ears which we're going to attach before the head goes on and our tail now the first thing I'm going to do is actually attach the front legs first thing you need to do is actually bend at the foot and you can do that even if the wire is quite thick by just pressing that to a 90 degree angle remember we have this loose wall because this is what we're going to use to actually attach um, and secure once we've glued it in so that is how that leg is going to sit so it's going to be flush with the base so as near as damn it and that's going to add stability do the same with the other foot to about a 90 degree angle and even if one's a little bit longer or shorter it doesn't matter the most important bit is that these two sit in line with each other at the base of the body now what i'm also going to do here now is we need to because we're going to be pushing the wire into the body here we need to bend these wires again at a 90 degree angle now because that wire is bare it might be a bit more tricky if you're using a thicker wire this is one mil it's quite thick so you may need to just use a pair of pliers or some sort of tool just to to bend that at 90 degrees and the same with the other one there we go so they are ready to attach now let's get a rough idea of where we want to be poking in and this one's slightly shorter so we'll do this one first feet there so we're going to be looking around here I've got an awl here um, it's just got a pointy end where I usually call them a pointy tool because I find all is really awkward to say um, but you can use something like a barbecue skewer or a cocktail stick and we're just going to poke through with our tool so that the wire bend that a little bit far the wire actually finds its space just redo that so that is where that is going to sit so I'm going to make that a little bit bigger I'm going to push all the way through to the back and don't worry about that we'll soon cover that up that won't be visible because I just want to make that hole a little bit bigger there we go now we can see a proper hole you could use a knitting needle for this as well and that's going to pop in there easily because I want to be able to pop some glue in there and then the next one again is going to go right next to it that one's slightly higher that's just slightly lower so we'll pop this one just just slightly beneath but you can pull them about don't get too precious over that you can pull them about and, and make sure they're in the right positions the most important bit is that they they sit nice and flush at the base here there we go and now what I'm going to do, um, I've got a different glue here because that glue I had before had gone off. It was really horrible. Um, so this is just some hobby graft um, fabric glue. Um, you can use Yoohoo, any, any kind of fabric glue that you've got. Um, I like this one because it's got a little sort of pointy nozzle so you can actually get it. Let's make sure it's coming out and get it in there. And then again, you need to do this hole a few times. Make sure you've got plenty of space to get that glue in. Don't worry about any glue that's visible. That will dry clear. And then I'm going to pop that in there. And I'm going to pop that one in there. The legs will be sticking up at the moment, but that's okay. See how nicely positioned they are? And then we're just going to hold that for a little while till it becomes tacky but while we're doing that because the glue hasn't stuck yet we can actually felt and i'm using a fine needle so avoid the wires we can felt that around whilst it sticks and that will also secure it without the need for you to sit here holding it for the next 20 30 minutes I'm just going to pop that on there roughly. I'm not particularly bothered about how neat it is at the moment. We'll come back to that. Just remove any um, 
any dark wool that may be hiding in there or seems to find its way. But if you do this before that glue dries then your needle won't push against it. You won't find any resistance. Once the wool dries it becomes quite resistant. But we've only put a blob in and we know exactly where it is so we can avoid it. And bring that down so we can just secure these legs. So that excess wool, and if you haven't got any excess wool on the um, end of the, the top of the legs here, you can just apply it, um, your, you know, on top of the wire. So don't worry about that. I've got a little bit more here. And what we'll do is we will, we will neaten all this here. Let me see, just coming down the side of the leg. Because we want to keep that shape around to the other side. And that's starting to hold already, which is good. The thing with this project is it's it's a simple project but the technique is important so what we want to do is make sure that everything looks as perfect as possible the face looks as smooth as possible there's nowhere really a bit like the parsley hair project but because that was a darker wool you can get away with more with this there's um i'm using a bigger needle now this is a 38 star just to tease that wool because if i tease that wool with the 40 which is much finer i'll break the needle you can see there, just poke that in and we'll just leave that straggler there for now. So as you can see, that's nicely secured. Just going down the line of those legs so we don't lose that shape and then just tucking this in. But we can come back to that later and then the bit not need that so I'm just going to poke them out a little bit and there we go so you see how that's going to stabilize um, when it sits and then what we can do is we can also felt a little bit um, here if we want the legs to be secure against the base but for now I am just going to leave that as it is and I am going to let that dry and then come back and once it's dried, we'll pop the side legs in and start building it up. Okay, so this is dried now. And all I've done here is I've just worked gently down those legs just to maintain that shape. We may come back to it later, but for the time being, that's absolutely fine. I've secured this one down so it doesn't wag about, but not this one. So I'll show you how easy it is to do that. You don't even need to add any extra wool. And then we are now going to put on um, the little side paws. Uh, the back paws and I've already done this one and I've built that up slightly I may build that up some more probably work that shape a little more but I've done that one so I can show you how that is going to look and then when it's dry you can you know flip those feet to the side if you wish but you can see how that is is actually going to sit now and then because we've got this wire here I may even give it a little arch in its back um, but can you see how that one's flipping out because this one's more secure We'll come back to that. So again, you take your pokey tool, make sure, do one, and then the next one obviously make sure it's going to sit flat against the base, same as the other one. So I think about here. So I'm going to poke that tool all the way through again. I think that one's sitting about there. That should be okay. Let's have a look. When we pop it in, we'll see. Yeah, that's going to be fine. So poke it all the way through. Get the tip of your glue. Push it in. Until you see the glue start to come out. Just here. And plenty in there. And then we're going to stick this in. which looks to be about the right place. Yeah, because that's going to come here and then we're going to build up this side here so it's going to sit symmetrically like the other one. And it doesn't matter if that's further back than the other one is because we are actually going to cover it up. So that glue is in, you can see there. And I'm going to take some white carded wool now. You can use wool top, but I really like white carded for the... Um, for the top coats because it's um, felt quickly and you can get a really nice shape 
quickly also and it shows fewer needle marks on the top coat. If you're using a coarse wool top, something like a Jacob or a Shetland, then you'll be absolutely fine. But um, I wouldn't use something like, say, a fine merino for this because you are actually going to see, um, you're going to see all the needle marks. What you could do is use the merino to build it up and then just put a final top layer of carded wool on top if you haven't got too much carded wool. So just make a little pad, pop it on like so. And let's get this felted in before that glue goes off just so we're not fighting against the dried glue with the needle you could almost as well get away without the glue but I like it as a sort of security blanket to make sure everything's really nice and secure for the future and it's not going to move about once that's set but you can absolutely do this without the glue so as you can see here I've put this little pad on now I'm using my 40 star again bit bent but that's fine works perfectly fine but be careful not to hit the wire. I may hit the wire, it can be a bit clumsy sometimes. And then I will need a new needle, but fingers crossed. You're only working in through this top layer now. You're not poking right through into the body because that's already felted and you don't need to, which is why these um, fine needles as well with barbs at the tip, all the barbs at the tip work really well because it's catching the fibers as soon as it goes in. I think you find that with a, a spiral or a, a twisted needle, whatever you refer to it as well. I think they have the barbs at the tip. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong there, but I think I'm right. And again, the same goes if you're using um, a twisted stroke spiral needle. Um, the same rules apply. The higher the number, the finer the needle. So you would be using a finer uh, twisted needle for this part of your project. And if you wanted to use a twisted needle for the bulk of your project, then you would use a 38 or a 36. I do use a 36 occasionally. It's brilliant, for, um, especially for flat felting pieces, because it's a bit more robust than the 38. But I find that I always end up going back to the 38. I always find very quickly the 36, um, because it's a, th a thicker needle, it starts, the, the wool starts to resist it and you start to get sort of dimples of resistance in the wool. So... I tend to go back to the 38, but again, it's horses for courses, whatever you prefer, find what works for you. If you've got, these are Grossbecker needles, so Grossbecker are German needles, and um, you will find these, um, World of Wool sell these needles, and um, lots of other supplies online, but you, you may have the, uh, some cheap needles, and as I said before, use what you've got, don't go buying anything new if you don't need to but when you do then go to buy new needles buy what you can afford the Grossbecker are more expensive I think they work out at, it depends where you're getting them from they might work out at a pound a needle something like that um, but they really are superior to any other needles German company and they they use them in mostly machinery so they're manufacturing carpets and felt you know sort of you know really hard dense flat felt um, and that's why they, they sit in the machines with these little shoulders. Obviously, there's always a creative way to use something else. And that's how needle felting came about. I think it started um, needle felting maybe in the 80s or 70s. I'm not sure. I don't think it was any earlier than that. Obviously, felting itself, the wet felting, has been around for thousands of years. You know, since since man first walked the earth. Um but needle felting is, is much, much, much newer. It's a more sort of modern take on, on felting. The great thing is you can combine wet felting and needle felting. It's such a beautiful combination. Right, there you can see. So building that up and you'll see straight away, oh, that's not right. Look, you've got all this visible here. That's fine. We're going to cover that up. So that's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter if one's too far forward or far back, as long as they sit adjacent to each other like so we'll get some more wool on there and when you are putting it all together remember you've spent hours creating all the your, your beautiful body parts don't rush it at the last hurdle take your time this is the icing on the cake and you don't want to ruin it with sort of runny icing if that's an analogy of sorts you don't you know dripping down the cake and looking messy and the same goes with with needle felting 
these are your finishing touches it's like adding the skirting boards to your newly decorated room my hands are getting a bit sticky um it's usually quite good to have a, a wipe or something nearby when you are using glue and again you see just delicate uh, delicate maybe it could be a jelly cat and it's definitely a siamese i love jelly cat um toys i remember buying them for my daughter when she was younger i think they're still available right that's looking better but as you can see right we're a bit fat here but i actually quite like that so what i might do is actually build up that side a little bit but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take some of the air out of this because we do want it to be quite firm so that it doesn't distort so these are the times where you just you know you're really making sure these finishing touches work look really smart again it's Easy, simple technique. See, I'm using it diagonally now. So I'm reducing the needle marks. And then where this is joined here, what we want to do is end up with a seam that's barely visible. So you can just poke in at a diagonal angle, just going through that very top layer. You can't rush this. If you want a craft project that you can do in an hour, this isn't it. Um, there are many needle felting projects that can be done in 15 minutes or an hour like the dog brooches or the bumblebees um you know the mushrooms can be done in an hour um but this you know there's there's lots of wonderful techniques that you're going to learn doing this and i reckon excluding the time for the glue drying if you are a confident needle felter you could probably do this in about three hours if you've just started needle felting there may be areas that you're not happy with and then you do them again or you spend a bit more time on them um, you may over felt an area and have to remove it if you have to remove a part when you've over felted you will need to cut off that part because if you've over felted it you're never going to detach it from your project you can always add a bit more but you can't remove it and over felting you'll find it starts to get really hard when um, you've gone too far with the, the needle felting it will start to get soft again because the fibers actually break up and at that point there's not really a lot you can do with that because you can't put anything on top of it because the fibers underneath have already started to break down so it's just not going to work so the best thing you can do is you can just take a pair of scissors and be ruthless and cut it off there's absolutely no need to start again right that's looking more symmetrical still a little bit hippie there just going to pop that down a little bit so you can add more you may want more um a more accentuated line there with the parsley hair here and you see how it's got but then what you rump. can do is once you're absolutely happy with the size of it what you can do is put just a final very thin layer on especially if you've got any seam lines showing and then just gently felt that on like so so it's barely holding and you see all those lines disappear that is why carded wool is such a wonderful um top coat the chicken is wool top uh, sorry coal wool underneath so coal wool is just what you use for the the middle you know the bulk of your project and then what i've done is i have covered that with the carded wool and it gives such a perfect finish and that's a brilliant project as well um, that's a wonderful project i'll pop that in the um the links um for you if you want to have a go at this it's an absolutely gorgeous project that there's so many now on my youtube channel i think there's something like 60 70 videos on there now and counting and thank you to my amazing subscribers as well wonderful when you subscribe and, and support the channel and you know if you can possibly just give it a like and then also it's a great w place to ask me questions so you know when I'm at a particular part of the project if you have a question then just jot it down and then you know at the end of the tutorial when you you know if or before you start you can ask me a question ask me anything you like and I will answer in the comments for you and that's really useful for the other people as well because they will will see now can you see how that has now just become part of the body 
takes a little time but the effort is absolutely worth it because look at the result and the great thing with this as well is you can still have that firmness uh, around um, your project because we put we haven't used a full wire armature which can be quite difficult to maneuver so um, like with this fox here this is a full wire armature and I will do a tutorial for that um, but this is a much softer body because of all the wire and it's a different kind of different type of needle felting so there's a different way to work with that but with this you can still keep everything nice and firm and I love a firm felt so carry on with that um, I'm going to complete this side I'll just quickly show you I'm using the 38 here this legs as you can see stuck down all you do here is go through the side of the leg and this wall because it's barely felted this wall on the leg so it's nice and fresh and if you push that through just into the body either side go down the side of the wire so you're still maintaining that lovely shape of the leg and go slightly underneath as well and then what you're doing is you're actually securing those legs to the bottom so they don't wag about and then I'm gonna let this dry properly as well before I sort of scoot those legs those feet those paws should I say to the side okay felters um now i've completed the um body i've secured all of this nice thin top layer of carded wool that we put on to cover any seams i've gone around the back and made sure that's as neat as the front um and then what i'm doing here is i'm just gently going down the edges at a diagonal angle just to make sure that line's really nice and then what i've also done here is i've slightly bent that wire to give it an arch but I'm actually going to work in some wool here so I'm sort of making that firmer so we've got this this nice arch and you can also your hands are coming really handy so you can also use your hands to do that so we've kind of got this this arch because when that head then sits on here it's going to be slightly tilted back and then you've got this really nice shape and cats have that that kind of lovely arch and you can make it um you know as as arched as you want it can be subtle it can be you know quite a severe arch it depends how you want it but that's why the wire is really useful for this if you really don't want to use wire you don't have to you could go with how i made parsley here and there is no wire in this i mean even though the legs are really long and firm this was all made around the barbecue skewer so if you don't feel confident to tackle it with wire, you can use a barbecue skewer. And if you go to the Parsley Hair tutorial, again, I'll pop another link down below, um, you will be able to follow that. And the head, the body, the legs, the uh, all of the legs, all made around the barbecue skewer. And then there's a lovely, fabulous technique in there to show you how to get those gorgeous ears made. So um, if you don't want to do the wire, then use this technique works really really well okay so everything's sort of dry now i'm just going to leave that for a second because we need to add our ears i don't want to be putting them on once it's on because it's going to be a bit of a faff so ears we made in the previous tutorial slightly different both of them i've not gone for any sort of symmetry but if you want to make sure they are perfectly um even you can do just tidy up these wisps but once they're on we can you know don't worry too much about anything until they're actually secure and as you remember when we made them we left this bit loose at the end and when you add in limbs that's you know make sure you try and remember to leave some uh, loose wool because it just makes it so much easier to attach if you've got fresh wool that you can attach to your project it's going to um, adhere much firmer and you know in the correct place and it will stay in place so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay that and I think we want to have something like this and even if one is slightly bigger than the other it doesn't matter because again it's all where you position it and then we'll bring this in to give it that little scoop there which really um, adds some lovely detail to it so I think we'll have them slightly apart so we'll start here and as you can see this is the, the loose wool I'm going to go in with the 40, the finer needle, because just want this through the top and I don't want to leave a lot of needle marks. And what you can do is if you've got black coming through from 
when you've added the black previously we can pop um, a little layer of carded white on top of this later so I just want to tack that on almost you know before it's fully felted so we can move it around so that's kind of going to sit there and then we're going to have it like so so just make sure that loose wool no further up than that just the loose is tacked on so that's kind of flopping about a bit but already secure and then same for this side and be careful not to squish the face you've spent a long time creating those beautiful features and let's see that's going to be about right so hold it there carefully with your fingers and just tack on that loose wool and this is where it just really comes alive you you know you all that hard work i mean look you can just see it coming together just careful not to you can always adjust this later they will get squished but that's fine I suppose you could actually, if you wanted to, leave the eyelashes to last. Um, but I like to sort of have hold of the face and, you know, be able to move it around before I um, before I attach it to the body. And then I'm just going to push it. Now here we want to bring that in. So we're creating that sort of scoop, that little bowl shape that you have with the ears. So just pinch it in and you can see how you want to narrow that in. So... This is quite wide here where we've tacked it. Now we want to narrow it as we felt it up onto the back of the head. So we start to create that shape. You see how that's happening. And then with your fingers, you can also do the same. So let's just get them on first. That just needs to come up a little bit. Again, take your time with this. That's better. And then I want to have that shape like so. And we can still, as you can see, we can still move them around. So I'm going to add, to do this a little more. I'm just going to hold that there and then push that in towards the ear. So you're narrowing it. And the same on the other side. Wear finger guards if you need to. So I've just moved them over. That's why it's important not to over felt to start with because you may need to reposition them. That's better. And then this one here, let's just pull that back down a bit because it's slightly bigger slightly taller than the other one so what we're going to do is you're going to push that needle down and that will shorten that ear it will pull that ear into the back of the head it's a great technique for short and you can use it if you're making um sheep and one leg's longer than the other you can do exactly the same you can go in from the top pushing into the body and that will shorten the um the legs all these techniques can be applied to pretty much any project and that's the great thing you know when you're picking up techniques i'm just going to change that 40 to a 38 because i'm using a bit of pressure and i will break that needle you know all these techniques can be applied to all of your other needle felting projects you know and we can see this is looks a bit messy at the back here but that's okay because we are going to cover that as i say take your time as my hubby from the North East would say, don't spoil it for a penneth of tar. So I am just going to continue with that. I'm going to flatten these a bit more so that they actually sit like so. And then when we've done that, we shall come back and we shall attach it to the head and add the tail. And then I think we are just about done. So carry on. Get your ears in the perfect position. You'll know when they look right, they will just look right. And then we'll, um, we'll continue. And we're almost there. We're nearly at the finish line. Okay, so ears in place. I just want to tidy up the back of this head because it looks a bit unsightly with all these um, lines and this black showing. I've just been around and I've just trimmed off any excess black that I can. <laughs> Got rid of that and then all i'm going to do is exactly the same as we did with the legs here i'm going to take some small amounts of carded wool and using my 40 star i'm just going to gently pop that on i'm not too concerned about this black showing through the base but I just want to make sure that these seams are not visible because we spent a long time making that head. 
And again, it's very simple, but the simple things that often take the most time because there is nowhere to hide with them. You're not covering them with wool or um, long fur. So this is where the the you know the the body shapes really need to be as perfect as possible. And you see, just using thin wisps, so it's barely there. I don't mind seeing a little bit of shadow underneath, but what I don't want to see is that stark black wool coming through and again as you can see I am just poking the top of that and then once it's getting close to done you can inspect it I'll work on mine a little more but I won't do it now but you continue and then we'll get the head attached so felt hub we are almost there. We are now going to attach the head. I've just reworked my ears, tidied it up at the back. And again, this one was a little bit narrower. So what you can do is you can just pull that ear out until it matches the other one. That's why your hands are such great tools. And that's why needle felt is amazing as well, because you know there's so much flexibility in the wool and you can just you know adjust all of the shapes. It just makes it so accessible for everyone. Right. So our head is going to go on here. We've got some loose wool still for the body, which we are going to use to secure the um, neck to the head. And it's slightly tilted back, so we don't want the head too far back on the wire because it would look odd. So I would say if we went in about, about here, so I'm just going to poke through, trying not to distort the wool now before we glue or do anything let's just see how that's ah that's going to be perfect for me so before you add any glue or do anything else just make sure that you're happy with that position because you can you can put a hole somewhere else so i'm just going to make that hole a little bit bigger i'm going to push through and it doesn't even matter if you come through the other side that will soon disappear but what i want is a nice big gap there for my glue And I'm going to pop that, sort of push it in there and squeeze until you start to see it come out like so. And plenty in there, but not so that it's really messy. So let's get that in there and you can just twist until it's in position. I mean, you could have the head in any position you want. You can have it looking slightly back. You could have it looking to the side. You can bend the head forward, but for now, Ours is going to stay like so. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my needle and this loose wool here will create an invisible seam where you've attached the head. And then once that glue has dried, it will be really, really secure. Again, another reason for keeping at the top of the limbs, you know, where they are actually going to attach when they're going to come into contact with another part of the body always try and leave some loose wool. It just makes your life a little bit easier. Again, if you need to, you can add more, but I want to keep this neck really thin. Remember, it's a very stylized piece, this. It's, it's almost sort of Siamese Disney cat, really. Um, but can you see how that's already nice and firm? And that glue hasn't gone off yet, but there's no wobble there because we've secured it with that wool. Oh, I'm so pleased that it's looking gorgeous. So we'll go around again and just gently poke. That's my 38. Now I've done the, the graft. Just want some fine work here because I don't want to make a, a severe line around where that attaches to the, um, the head. I want it to become part of it, as you can see. And then you can just twist and then we can tip that back like so because we want what we want to do is when, when, when it's on, once it's on display you want to see that beautiful sort of Cheshire cat type smile that sort of content like the cat that has literally just got the cream and there we go 
I suppose if you wanted as well, we'll put a little bit more wool on here. You could add a little bow tie or something if you wanted. Um, in fact, these would be absolutely amazing as um, wedding cake toppers. You could do a his and hers or a hers and hers or a his and his cake toppers um, for a wedding cake, which would be absolutely amazing. Can you imagine those on? They would just look gorgeous to be the centre of attention. And I'm just going to... Just a little bit too much bulk going on here and I just want to tidy that up. So I'm just laying some carded wool on here by needle. And just wrap that around. I don't think I need that much actually. You just want to cover this bulk so that again, like the side, the back legs, Look like they're just part of the body there's no obvious connection and can you see how I'm just tapping that wool I'm not poking it in even I'm just so it holds on to that top layer and these bits are so worth doing If you are brand new to needle felting, if you have ended up with something that looks like this, that is amazing for your first project. You clearly, you know, have got the knack straight away. But for most new needle felters, it will look slightly different, you know, um, but that's that's the whole thing. You are learning. You know, this is this is kind of a chapter three project. You're on chapter one. So if you've if you, just, you know, go, go to my blog, my ultimate blog guide to needle felting there are dozens and dozens of free tutorials guides tips tricks all the things to help you get started if you're finding this too much of a challenge we all started making a round ball or a a very simple shape but that's what needle felting is it's a series of shapes that connect as one whole and which give you your incredible finished project and if and like I say if you want to really work on getting a, a really good basic technique then the mushrooms are fantastic because you know it teaches you how to get them firm how to create shapes how to add a little bit of detail you could do um, the sheep are really fantastic for beginners there's you know the full video tutorial for that there's um, and then there's tutorials for making realistic eyes. So you, you have to gauge where you're at. You know, what stage of the needle felting journey you are at. And don't overwhelm yourself. Whatever you've created, be really, really pleased that you've done it. You've actually sat down, you've taken the plunge and you've actually done it. Because once you've started, you will learn so many skills in that first project regardless of um its difficulty whether it's a, a simple basic project like the mushrooms which take about an hour or something more complicated like this you will learn and learn and learn continually and then you will work um when you start your next project you will do it in so differently and you will have the confidence to to really develop those skills don't worry about what other people are going to think of it if you don't want to show it to anyone don't show it to anyone it's about your enjoyment it's about being in the moment it's about enjoying the respite that it gives you and boy does it give you some serious respite and at this time of year you know, when the weather's lovely you can sit outside and do it it's just amazing my friend loves making sheep she must have about 30 sheep Sharon you know who you are um, she absolutely adores making sheep and she um, is such a good needle felter and she came on so quickly and because there's no sort of tricky complex patterns and and tiny stitches and things like that to follow it just you can I mean this was a happy accident this when I made the first one it was supposed to be a mouse because I just couldn't get the cat's faces right so I thought oh no I'm not doing cats and then it ended up as a cat so this was a happy accident not what it was supposed to be at all but i loved it so i thought well i'm going to attempt that again at some point because it was quite a while ago now 
been doing this for oh, just over 10 years and then you see all these little black bits we won't do this now in the video but what you can do is any sort of wispy areas you can just go along with this pair of scissors and you can take all those wisps off <laughs> make sure you blow all those black fibers off and then here we go we are ready for the, the epic tail now i want this quite close to here so let's get this in here And I hope you've loved doing this project. I've loved doing it. I've loved learning again with this project, you know, the, the shapes of the face and, uh, you know, using the part wire armature instead of a full one. And just teaching, which is what I, I love to do. So I'm going to pop that in there. And I am going to leave that like that because I want that to stick and I don't really want to add too much wool I may add a tiny bit just around the base like so but I really want to just keep that there until it till that glue goes off and then we can um, we can bend that tail so give that 15 minutes or so if you're in the hot weather probably wouldn't need that long but you see we want just that really neat neat finish there we don't want any bulk so you can just poke in a little bit of wool we've added and then we shall come back and lay it that way it wants to be straight up really we'll lay it like that so it just stays as is and then we can curl it so the glue now has had some time to set and that looks pretty strong i'm just going to add a tiny amount of wool at the base just to give it just to make it extra secure i'm going to use the uh, a thicker needle because i don't want to to break the the fine one just hold the needle hold the um the tail in position and then we're just going to put two simple bends in it the first bend will be close to the base so that it can sit back on it if it requires um, any stability from the tail. And then I'm just going to go back in with a finer needle now just to reduce any needle marks and then just pull that wool over just so it looks nice and tidy go in here and you see by not building up around that we've kept that really neat really tidy which is exactly what we wanted okay here we go then so at the moment it's sitting like this and you can oh, you can <laughs> head wants to move you can sit it like that so then what we're going to do is I'm just going to bend with my fingers a gentle bend you can see what I'm doing here so that it actually sits at the base may have to fiddle with that for a bit and then I'm just going to use my fingers to pop another bend in there and then I'm just going to bring that up so it sits a bit higher And then we may want to, oh, that needs a little bit more wool. Just to secure it. Takes a little bit of working. And 
and then I'll come back once we've finished and just tidy that up but I'm just going to get some wool in there just to that's better just to make it nice and secure that glue hasn't quite gone off I don't think so I'll leave it for a little while longer there we go. and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to arch this back final hurdle then felters um we're on to the last finishing touch and this is going to be the the glorious whiskers now i have used horse hair this natural horse hair but fishing wire works just as well get a really thin fishing wire which i believe you can get on ebay um and we're going to use this to create these gorgeous um whiskers i've used a a, a slightly bigger needle than you would for a sewing needle but it, a standard sewing needle is fine also so i've just popped that through because it just makes it a little bit easier to to thread through so i'm going to start here just under the nose here and go across and pull that through to there and then I'm going to go through the same spot on the other side or you can just trim it at this point but sometimes you can create um, a loop which just saves a bit of time go back through there and through the same spot also if you have got um any old violin strings they are they are horsehair as well so they are perfect for the job so if you have a, a budding musician in the family and you've got some discarded old strings then keep them because they are perfect and snip that i'm just going to snip that a little bit of a kink at the end there I think the whiskers just are the icing on the cake for it. And I'm just starting, you, you can put them just randomly if you want, but I'm just coming slightly further away from where I started. So we're going to sort of work up the face. Hold on to the existing whiskers. Pull through until you're happy with that length. So we're going to create another loop here. Come back through around the same spot. Pull that through snip and I'm actually going to snip this close to the face here because that's got a kink in it that I don't want and that's coming on brilliantly obviously the whiskers are loose at the moment so you can just pull them out but once you've got them all in place you can um, dab a little bit of glue just where the whiskers sit and that will dry clear Make sure you sort of get the glue just in there and that will will hold them in place and these as well I'm, I'm making sure they've got nice sort of curves on the end they've not got lots of kinks it just looks nicer if you've got something like the fishing wire then they will they, they, that won't be an issue twist them around turn them so they're at the right angle because that one's kicked right up in the air so I'll just twizzle that and again you can always put a little bit of wool in there and just felt it down I'm not sure that I actually need too much more I may add a couple more I may change this out which is why as well don't glue it before you've actually got all your whiskers in place because you might pull some out and change them there it is and it's all its cat glory I mean that's pretty stunning and then finally with the base if it's um if you find that it's a bit wibbly wobbly and it's not standing up straight I mean mine's okay just take your needle and then just check that this is nice and flat and flush with those feet and just felt it down with your needle or press it down with your fingers squish it down and there we go and then again you can arch that back further back so you've got something even more but what you have to be careful if you do that is just make sure it's not top heavy so there we have your finished Siamese style cat thanks so much for um, joining me in the felt hub and make sure you check all the description links 
below um, so that you can carry on your needle felting journey. Happy felting! <laughs>